Okay, have you ever been in one of those arguments? You know the ones I mean. It feels like no matter what you do, you're just stuck going around and around and around and around. And it never really gets resolved. It never gets resolved. No one really wins. And everyone just kind of ends up feeling worse. Definitely. Happens all the time. Well, it turns out there might actually be like a reason for that feeling of just like going nowhere. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And get this. It's called the drama triangle. Ooh, the drama triangle. I like it. Right. Yeah. So in this deep dive, yeah. we are going to understand this uh, like a sneaky little pattern and more importantly, how to escape it. Let's do it. All right. Our source material for today's deep dive is an excerpt about the drama triangle model itself. Okay, so this drama triangle, it's a concept that was actually developed by this guy, Dr. Stephen Cartman. Okay. And what I think is really fascinating about it is it just highlights how predictable these like dysfunctional interactions can be. Yeah. You know, it's not about pointing fingers. It's about recognizing the roles that we all fall into. Oh. Uh, sometimes without even realizing it. Oh, so it's kind of like we're all like actors in a bad play. Yes. But we don't even know we're like reading from a script. Exactly. Interesting. And that script usually features these three main characters, the victim, the rescuer, and the persecutor. Okay, so classic like love triangle situation it is except in this triangle everyone loses oh okay gotcha right so each of these roles right they all come with their own like set of behaviors and underlying motivations mm -hmm. the victim for example right they tend to feel really overwhelmed and helpless mm -hmm. like they just kind of give up their power and they often seek someone to swoop in and like solve all their problems for them oh i totally know that feeling yeah we've all been there it's like when your internet goes out and you're just like somebody please fix this like i can't deal with this exactly you're like i can't possibly handle this and you know it's funny because that's actually like exactly when the rescuer enters the scene right right so they see someone struggling they want to jump in to help it's like their cue it is. It's their cue. And they often, like, neglect their own needs in the process because they're so focused on helping the victim. Right. Now, the interesting thing, and this is where it gets a little tricky, is that the rescuer's motivation, it often comes from this place of, like, a deep-seated need to feel needed themselves, oh. which might stem from their own, like, past experiences, you know? Right. But here's the thing, right? Yeah. While rescuing might seem helpful on the surface, right. it can actually keep the victims stuck in this cycle of dependence. Oh, so almost like enabling them in a way. It is. It's like a subtle form of enabling. Interesting. And it prevents the victim from developing their own coping skills and like taking responsibility for their own stuff. It makes you wonder if sometimes like saying no can actually be a form of help in the long run. Ooh, that's such a good point. Right. Because sometimes saying no can actually push the victim to, like, step up and figure things out for themselves. Right, right. And that leads us to the third role, the persecutor. Dun, dun, dun. Right. So this is the person who blames, criticizes, points fingers. They might believe they're holding others accountable, right? Right. But often their actions create more tension, more conflict. Right, yeah. And it just kind of escalates the whole drama. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, I feel like it's important to like point out here that we're not saying these roles are like, you know, fixed personalities. No, definitely not. Right. Like we can all kind of shift between them depending on like the situation and the people we're with. Exactly. It's about the dynamic between people, yeah. not about labeling anyone right. as a certain type. Okay. That makes sense. So wait, so like I could be a rescuer in one situation and then be like a victim in another. Absolutely. Oh, wow. This is starting to feel a little too real. It's true. Yeah. So think about it, you know. Imagine like a workplace scenario. Okay. Right? Yeah. You got someone who's like constantly missing deadlines. Mm -hmm. They're kind of playing the victim, right? Right. Then a coworker like steps in to finish their work, mm -hmm. you know, out of the goodness of their heart, they're being the rescuer. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, resentment starts to build, hmm. right? And eventually that rescuer, they snap and then they turn into the persecutor. Oh, wow. So it's almost like a chain reaction. It is. See how the huh. cycle keeps spinning. Yeah. I've definitely seen that play out before. Yeah. Like both at work and just, you know, in, in life. For sure. So, okay, knowing all this, how do we actually, like, break free from this whole drama triangle Hi. like is there even an escape route there is there totally is and that's actually the most empowering part of all of this okay so the key is to shift from these like reactive behaviors mm. to more proactive empowering ones yeah. instead of being the victim right 
we can become creators. Ooh, I like that. Right. So this means taking responsibility for our own needs and like actively finding solutions to our own challenges. So instead of waiting for like a knight in shining armor, we like pick up the tools and build our own castle. Exactly. Love that analogy. Right. Yeah. You become the hero of your own story. Yes. I love that. And instead of rescuing, yeah. we can become coaches. Oh, okay. Right. So this means offering support and guidance without taking over. Right. Or enabling someone else's problems. Right, right. So it's about, you know, asking powerful questions, listening actively, and really empowering others to find their own solutions. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And like what about the persecutor role? Right. What's like the healthier alternative to, you know, being being that person? Right. So that's where the challenger comes in. Oh, okay. So instead of blaming and criticizing, we can learn to set clear boundaries and offer constructive feedback in a respectful, assertive way. Okay. Think of it as like guiding someone back on track, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than pushing them off a cliff. Ooh, I see, I see. Right. So it's about addressing the behavior, right. not attacking the person, right. and offering like specific suggestions for improvement. Right, yeah. Okay, I think, you know, this is so insightful. It really feels like, you know, understanding this whole drama triangle yeah. gives you a completely new perspective on how to like handle conflict in general. It really does. It's a total game changer. Yeah. Now, how does this all apply to our listeners in their everyday lives? Right. So think about it this way. By becoming aware of these roles, mm -hmm. we can start to make like more conscious choices in how we respond to those tricky situations. Yeah. Right. We can choose to step out of the drama. Yeah. And step into these healthier ways of interacting. Right. It's all about self-awareness, personal growth mm -hmm. and building more fulfilling relationships in all areas of our lives. Oh, I love that. So the next time we find ourselves caught in one of those like frustrating circular arguments, we can kind of hit the pause button. Yeah. Right? yeah. And ask ourselves like, wait. What role am I playing here? Exactly. And what's it like a more constructive way that I could respond? Totally. And here's something I want you to think about. Okay. Go back and think about a recent conflict. Mm -hmm. Maybe one you had at work or at home or with a friend, right? Right. Which role did you find yourself in? Oh, good question. And knowing what you know now, what could you have done differently? Mm. How could you have maybe shifted your approach yeah. to create a more positive outcome? Yeah. Such a great question to reflect on. Yeah. It's all about learning and growing. Yeah. Right. Right. Every interaction is an opportunity to practice these ah. new skills mm -hmm. and step out of those old patterns. Yes. Remember, we all have the power to break free from the drama and build more positive. Yes. And empowering connections in our lives. Couldn't have said it better myself. And that's a wrap on this deep dive. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for joining it, fam.